Good evening on this Friday, the 22nd of February, out across Australia. And it's been quite some time since we've uploaded a cyclone update, but that is also because Australia hasn't really been affected by any tropical threats since Cyclone Oswald decided to flood much of the Queensland coastline. But things are starting to turn here out across the tropics once again, and it looks like portions of the Kimberley Coast along with the rest of Western Australia, could be impacted by a significant tropical cyclone within the next five days. As you can see here, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology is doing a good job by sounding the alarm pretty quickly. As we work our way into Saturday, they only give a low chance of tropical cyclone development, but as we head deeper into the weekend and into early next week, Sunday and Monday, they say that the chance of cyclone formation is on the high side, and they are using the severe tropical cyclone wording which is pretty noteworthy considering that we have nothing more than a tropical low out there at this current time. This afternoon's visible satellite imagery shows that the monsoon trough is really becoming more energized with more in the way of convective activity stretching all the way from the top end westward well into the Indian Ocean and we have two competing areas of low pressure. One is well out into the Indian Ocean but the other one is much closer to the Australian coastline just to the west and northwest of Darwin and we think that the one closer to land is going to have the better chance of developing into a tropical cyclone within the next couple of days. As we turn to the upper level water vapor imagery, as you can see here as denoted by the cloud pattern, there is a lot of upper level divergence which is a healthy signature that conditions are favorable. The vertical wind shear is light which is something that tropical cyclones need to develop and in terms of the overall steering we see that we do have a mid-level steering ridge out across western Australia however this ridge is prograding more toward the east and the models are advertising a very amplified trophy pattern here with more troughiness coming in across the eastern Indian Ocean and it's going to begin to work its way into western Australia this is going to set up the alleyway for anything that develops out across the waters to head more toward the south here in the coming days the low-level vorticity analysis really shows where the monsoon trough is situated along with the two competing areas of low pressure and although the vorticity is greatest well out into the Indian Ocean we think that the tropical low closest to Western Australia is going to become the more dominant of the two within the next 24 to 48 hours and as we turn on the latest wind shear this is a look at the upper level winds and the streamlines and you can see that we do have a narrow pocket of favorable upper level ridging and this is why we see the upper level divergence on the cloud depiction with the water vapor imagery. And over time we think that the wind shear values are going to remain the lightest just to the north of the Kimberley coastline. And this is indirectly as a result of that ridge being a little to the south of there. And usually just to the north of those ridges that's where your best conditions are going to tend to develop. And that coincides where the models or at least the majority of the models are showing the greatest chance of tropical cyclone development. Of course, considering that we're dealing with the monsoon trough, the amount of moisture and instability is unlimited here for this tropical cyclone to really get cranking. So we don't think that dry air is going to be much of a factor. And of course, we are well into the peak of summer, so the water temperatures north of WA are more than favorable for moderate to even rapid development if the tropical low can really begin to organize. The 0Z run of the ECMWF forecast model just came out within the last 30 to 45 minutes. So here is the 24 hour depiction at the mid-level steering layer and you can see the surface low beginning to show up even aloft here at around 18,000 feet as it continues to strengthen and it becomes more prevalent in all layers of the atmosphere. But more importantly in terms of the steering, notice that the ridging to the south is starting to break down a little bit and that is because we have all of this significant troughing coming in from the southwest and the ridge cannot hold up to all of these westerly winds streaking across the Indian Ocean and although the trough temporarily relaxes here as we go into day three we still see the developing tropical cyclone just to the north and then we see another reinforcing shot of the troughing coming in near Perth by 96 hours or day four the tropical cyclone is starting to feel the influence of this trough working its way in directly to the south of the system so therefore by day five we certainly see a landfall here right in the middle of WA you see the storm coming in near or just to the east of Port Hedland so that is certainly a forecast that must be considered especially given that the European model overall is the number one performing model year in and year out but the European can also have its bad days and that's why we also need to check up on the other model guidance this is a look at the American GFS 
and usually when the European and GFS are in fairly good agreement within three to five days, that is a good sign that the forecast has a good chance of verifying. Now as we work our way into 48 hours, you can see that the tropical cyclone is continuing to slowly strengthen to the north of Port Hedland. And into 72 hours, you can see that the tropical cyclone is really starting to develop and become better defined here. And we also see the troughing coming in once again, just like what we saw with the European model. And finally into day four, you can see that the tropical cyclone is really getting its act together. More than likely a severe tropical cyclone at this stage and it's making landfall in the same general area that the European showed it just a moment ago and if anything the landfall is perhaps 12 to 18 hours quicker in this particular model solution. Also for interests that are well to the south of the coastline this is still something for you to also keep a close watch on because you will run the risk of heavy rainfall in the event that the tropical cyclone does become fully captured by the trough as we are seeing in the guidance this afternoon it will continue to slide south well inland but along with the tropical cyclone or its remnants you will still be looking at in excess of 200 millimeters uh, precipitation well away from the coastline and potentially in excess of 500 to 600 millimeters along the Kimberley coast. If you take the GFS forecast track verbatim, then this is what we can anticipate in terms of the precipitation accumulation over the next eight days. Again, we're looking at 500 to 600 millimeters near and just to the east of Port Headland. If this is in fact the area where the center moves in, and once it moves well inland, once again, we're still looking at well in excess of 200 millimeters across a rather large swath of WA. So this is going to be something for not only coastal residents, but also anyone in the interior portion of the region to keep a very close watch on. But once again, I think the main concern with this particular storm could in fact be the risk of destructive winds near the inner core when it makes landfall. Based on the current model projections, this is probably going to be at least a severe Category 3, if not higher, once it makes landfall within four to five days. In the meantime, we could always hope that the models are just overdoing things. One thing that we can at least hope for is that the tropical low hugs the coast or moves inland a little quicker than forecast, which would give it less time to strengthen over favorable upper-level winds and favorable oceanic heat content. So that will definitely be something to look out for. Now as we continue to look at some of the other model guidance, this is a look at the UK Met model projection in 24 hours. And at this time it shows nothing more than a broad low encompassing a very large area to the north of Port Headland. Now based on the current satellite depictions, I think that the tropical low may be a little more organized by this time compared to what this model is showing. So we do need to consider that as we advance into 48 hours. But even here with this model, as we go into day three, it becomes quite evident that the UK Met, much like the ECMWF and GFS, is developing a severe tropical cyclone. And one thing that I am very confident about in terms of this forecast is that this storm will not only become fairly strong, but it will make that southerly turn because there is just too much troughing down toward the south for the tropical cyclone to avoid it. I think that a southerly turn into WA is almost inevitable. As with any four to five day forecast, however, it's just too early to really pinpoint the area that has the greatest probability of a tropical cyclone landfall. But if I had to give you a guesstimate, I would say that it's probably most likely that the center of circulation will come in somewhere to the east of Karatha, but also to the west of Broome. So this still leaves a wide open area. And even though Port Hedland is in the thick of things, if the inner core goes just to the east or just to the west, you could still have the chance to narrowly avoid some of the strongest winds and the highest storm surge. But again, it's just way too early to go into any type of specifics like that. And it's also one of the reasons why the Bureau of Meteorology prefers to not even issue a track forecast until the tropical low becomes even better organized. And having said all of this, I would still encourage everyone living along the northern coast of WA to keep an eye on this system. And I am quite confident that the Bureau will be putting out more tropical cyclone information as we head deeper on into the weekend. So naturally, this is going to remain a very fluid situation over the next several days, and more updates will be required. We will be posting more videos at 28storms.com slash cyclone. So if you haven't checked out the page, please go ahead and do so and bookmark us if you're from WA and in need of more Cyclone information. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we're also on Facebook and Twitter. So we try to make things as easy for people as possible to find us online, 
and we're going to try to keep you updated as long as this storm is developing to the north of Broome in Port Hedland. So stay safe out there, and we will see you here again fairly soon.